Yeah, hi everyone again. Um, it's really great to be back. We did a zone storage MC two years ago in Dublin. Um, that was uh, packed with presentations and we're really glad to be able to do this again. Um, so I'm running this and I've been working on making this happen together with Johannes. Uh, and I'd just like to thank you, every, thank everyone uh, who's now in the room and online. Um, it'd be great to get your feedback on all of this. And uh, we'll try to run things a little different from uh, the last MC. Uh, in that MC, uh, there was a lot of presentations and a lot of information, but it turned out to be pretty one way. Uh, so uh, we've divided up this into two halves. And the first half will do a quick retrospective and uh, try to summarize what we have today. Uh, so we'll do, like, I'll do a quick overview and then uh, we get a round of uh, like lightning updates from Damien, Johannes and Dennis. Uh, we'll pre present their respective areas uh, they have uh, sort of looked up the state on. And then we'll do some more in-depth presentations on uh, ongoing efforts. So we'll look at QMU development being done. Um, I'll present what we're doing for XFS and Slava will present uh, SSDFS and where that is uh, at the moment. And then we'll go into the second half where uh, we'll do um, more buff-like things. So Slava will start off with talking about how to sort of distribute and virtualize zones, uh, has a uh, proposal for that. Um, and then we will um, go into a number of topics that I've gathered from the community um, that for hopefully we're gonna spark a lot of discussion. So feel free to have feedback on and ask a lot of questions during the presentations, but we might have to put some of those discussions in the second half to, to, just to make sure that everything is covered before the break. Uh, and if you're connecting remote, please uh, raise your hand or turn on video. Um, could you monitor see, see where, yeah, to make sure that uh, your voice will be heard as well? Cool. Uh, so um, let's try to round off, round up where we are today with zone storage because it's a thing we've been working on for some time. And to look where we are today, it's good to sort of go to the beginning and, and, and start from there and, and, and see uh, how things developed. Uh, try to dig in this just now. We launched with uh, uh, with Damien uh, how it all started and. Uh, it started somewhere back in, what, 2015 with SMR drives, um, um, with work from Hannes and Damien to get the block layer support. SCSI. Or, block yeah, layer and SCSI. Yeah, block, yeah, and SCSI, of course. Uh, and that uh, was followed up with uh, F2FS support, not too far after that. And I think that was mainly Damien's work. Uh, or? Uh, yes. Yes. Roughly. Yeah, and we also had some really interesting research going on around that time. Um, uh, back then, Albitali Bagayev uh, drilled a hole into a hard drive to, to sort of reverse engineer uh, the operation of single magnetic drives to figure out what's going on. So he drilled a hole, put a high-speed camera in there to watch how the heads were moving. You don't need to do that anymore. Now, <laughs> the operation of zone storage is, uh, is pretty well known. Yeah. So that was just the first of uh, many re interesting research papers. Uh, the second one here, uh, that's on the sort of research uh, swim lane, is work on uh, LSM trees, how these fit uh, zone storage uh, on these formats. And a lot of other research has been done since. So we, by now, we have a pretty well-researched technology. So I think we covered uh, most use cases from caching to file systems to uh, direct application integration. Uh, and these things that I've just listed uh, in this presentation, it's just uh, like a handful of interesting stuff. But there's so much more if you want to go into what has been done in the research community. So we started off with SMR. And um, after, I don't know, what was five years, uh, uh, we managed to also squeeze in uh, flash support into the same sort of uh, semantics 
as um, uh, as SMR, so we got zoned uh, NVMe drives in the form of uh, zone namespaces. And with that, we got a host of um, application and uh, QMU enablement had support in SPDK. Um, uh, the Samsung guys released uh, XNVMe with uh, CNS support. Uh, uh, ButterFS uh, support stabilizers around that time. And that was followed by uh, distributed storage support in, in Ceph and this uh, SanaFS uh, is supporting uBlock now. And lately, we've also had the addition into the zone storage model of uh, uh, UFS. So we have zone UFS. So by now, we cover like three very big uh, usage areas of, of storage. We have uh, hard drives, we have uh, SSDs, and now uh, we also uh, support storage into mobile devices in standards and in the storage stack. And there's also research has, has been, in in all, been done in all of these areas. So that's where we're coming from. So this is where we have sort of landed today, uh, where we have I think pretty good uh, tools and library support. Uh, I don't think we're missing a lot uh, in that area. Uh, we've also done a lot of end-to-end uh, -end application enablement. In, we can run MySQL uh, sort of natively on some sto storage, um, along with RocksDB and uh, ByteDance. Uh, invested quite a lot in making their key value database, TerraDB, work well with some storage. And they've also continued developing new uh, databases uh, based on this technology. And by now, we also have uh, pretty wide uh, local file system support. Uh, so F2FS uh, now supports Zone Mobile Flash. Uh, ButterFS works um, very well now on both uh, Zone Storage and SMR. And uh, we're adding support into XFS. Um, I'll talk about that later. And yeah, we have, uh, as I mentioned in the previous slide, uh, also like bigger storage systems supporting CNS and SMR, uh, like Ceph, uh, OpenABS, and Maya Store for cloud stuff, uh, and SPDK, and so on. And we have distribution support, so we have you can just uh, install a normal distribution without any hacks and just use some storage. Yeah, so that. I hope gives you like a quick overview of where we are today, and um, I'd like to just hand over to Damien, who's going to do updates on SonFS and IOStack. Yes, yeah, so uh, the support for zone storage in IOStack, the, the recent uh, uh, biggest change that happened, uh, well, actually the main change since the essentially the start of, of the zone storage support was uh, the change to uh, the, the sequential write ordering control that is necessary to get uh, writes, uh, sequential writes per zone working on these devices. Since the IO stack, uh, the block IO, a layer inherently has no guarantees about uh, the ordering of commands within the stack. So there is, uh, there has been since the start uh, ordering control. Uh, for writes to zone block devices. So that was before done using the MQ deadline IO scheduler. So the, the write ordering was um, uh, implemented within the scheduler. So kind of a, a completely unknown to the, the remaining of the, the block layer. So that was working fine. However, that was forcing the user to use uh, an IO scheduler, which has overhead, which can be a problem if you have a very fast device like uh, uh, an NVMe ZNS SSD. Uh, and so we worked on removing that write ordering control from the block uh, IO scheduler into the block layer proper. So that was done with the implementation of zone write plugging uh, in, and that went in to kernel 6.10. So the principle of that control is the same as before with the IO scheduler. It is that we only allow at most one write per zone in flight uh, uh, at any time so that we never uh, get reordering of writes within a zone. 
the, the, the writes going to different zones may get reordered, but that's not an issue. And uh, everything works as is. So uh, there is essentially no change in the I.O. pattern for writes that you were seeing before with MQDLine. line. Uh, zone write plugin preserve uh, the, the same model. And um, it's been working great and stable since it's up 10. We are uh, actively testing that uh, um, every week against every RC, and so far we have not uh, found any problem, any issue. It's been very uh, stable. So, advantage of that, uh, again, is that we can uh, remove the dependency on the IO scheduler and the line. So, uh, you can now essentially use your uh, zone storage with any. Uh, IO scaler you want, uh, BFQ or known or Kyber or whatever you own, uh, there is no dependency, it's still going to work the same way. <coughs> uh, that also allowed us to move a lot of the, the uh, um, kind of zone specific code we had in the device mapper and SCSI layer into a, a generic uh, implementation in the block layer, so that simplifies DM and SCSI. So in particular, the zone append emulation is now uh, generically implemented in the block layer. Uh, and that the removing of the, the block house scheduler uh, does increase performance uh, significantly for SSDs. The single drawback so far that we have identified is that some drives, some HDDs, uh, actually don't really like to see uh, gaps between writes to consecutive zones when you are doing a fully sequential write uh, IO pattern. Uh, and you, some drives, depending on their internal uh, command scheduling, will generate a seek between uh, these two writes. So you, you do get uh, some performance uh, drop when you cross uh, zone boundaries. Total depends on the drive, uh, and vendors suffering that have been notified and, and uh, working on, on firmware improvement to avoid that. Uh, so the other area uh, uh, which I, I, I maintain is zone FS. Uh, so there has not been a lot of changes recently, um, mostly just uh, so some small bug fixes in the uh, error recovery pass, uh, conversion to the new mount API, and large file support. That's the, the main thing. So no uh, functional change whatsoever. Uh, it's been stable. It's used in production in uh, by, by many um, uh, users of uh, zone storage, of uh, SMR drive in particular. Uh, what we are looking at, however, is uh, uh, extending uh, kind of the uh, uh, right I.O. interface uh, to be able to uh, uh, issue zone append operations, so append writes, uh, um, from user space. Uh, since zone append writes um, do not uh, go through the, the zone write plugin that limits the number of writes, you can actually uh, write at high QDEPs using zone append operations, uh, so increasing performance. However, there is no user interface to do that, and ZoneFS itself internally is not using zone append. So we are working on, on, on trying to up, uh, add this interface. Uh, most likely, that is going to happen through uh, IOE ring. So these are uh, kind of the areas we're working on uh, for Zone FS. Jonas, you want to? So for ButterFS, um, we have the initial upstream support since 5.12, which is feels like ages ago. Uh, we added garbage collection in 5.13. There's still odd bugs here and there. Uh, NVMe CNS support got added in 5.16. Uh, experimental RAID support uh, got added in 6.7, but it's, you currently have to, to compile the kernel with the config option ButterFS debug and compile the user space tool with the experimental features enabled. We're still, still in the stabilization phase, so the more users trying out, the more bugs we find, obviously. Um, the rate support is very experimental at best. Let, let's put it that way. It's even worse than rate 5 support on normal butterflies. Uh, and the metadata over committing and uh, space accounting has some odd counting bugs here and there. But I hear from, from, from some people that are using it for sing on single SMR disks that it's pretty stable. So. We're we're getting there. Next one's Dennis. 
Okay, yeah, last but not least, cloud storage and uh, virtualization. So we have SPDK, we have support there for ZNS since V2010. And there's still some ongoing effort with some minor bug fixes and smaller feature com completions. Um, yeah, lately there was a paper published from Alibaba and uh, Solidime. They published a paper, CCL, Cloud Storage Acceleration Layer which uh, shows uh, benefits in, in the total cost of ownership for Alibaba uh, deploying its own storage in the cloud environment. And uh, yeah, the ZNS patches are to be upstreamed because they are just work in progress patches that are not yet on the list. Um, in Ceph, with the latest release, uh, Reef, uh, that is stable, um, Crimson OSD was introduced and has also initial CBD support. Um, However, there needs to be some um, active zone resources accounting to be done. Uh, this is not done at all in the, in the code base yet, so that has to be added, because otherwise we are running out of active resources on ZNS devices. For um, SMR, this is probably fine for now, but yeah. Um, then on, on um, Kubernetes, we have OpenEBSs, um, storage stack via the Maya store engine and there is an open pull request for initial initial ZNS support but we are having right now discussions if that is the right way to do or if we should utilize C cell rather because uh, Maya store is also working with uh, SPDK under the hood so that is a natural uh, fit maybe so still discussion ongoing discussion there and uh, yeah, Sam will talk next about QEMU. So um, we have initial ZNS emulation support there, and we can attach ZNS devices via VFIO and uh, WordIO BLK. SMR disks can also be attached via WordIO SCSI and VHost SCSI. But uh, because the initial emulation doesn't persist, um, yeah, the QCore 2 support will be added. So, yeah, zone storage can can be emulated at <coughs> and persisted. But Sam will talk next about that.